infrastructure for all mean in a city like Sao Paulo. An urban planner from Switzerland shows us how the city is improving living conditions in its shanty towns. Architect and city planner Fabienne Hölzel from Switzerland has been in Sao Paulo for two years. Her job has nothing to do with the sea of high-rises here. She deals with the poor areas on the periphery of the southern hemisphere's largest city. We're responsible for the 30% of the population, 30% of 11 million people who live in precarious conditions and occupy 10% of the municipal area. You can see the imbalance, 30% of the people on only 10% of the territory. Sao Paulo is actually a wealthy city. Its economy is as large as Switzerland's. The city is spending 4% of its budget to upgrade the slums, known as favelas. As part of CEHAB, the city planning authority, Fabienne and her co-workers are responsible for building up a complete infrastructure. Electricity, water, roads, and sidewalks. It's the reverse of what city planners usually do. As a city planner, I'm not going into an undeveloped area where I have free reign. Instead, I have to move within an area already built up. And that reality is even more extreme here, where the people have built their houses and their districts by themselves. So my task here isn't to invent something new, but to improve what already exists, sometimes using very small measures. We accompany Fabien to the favela of São Francisco. 30 kilometers from the city center, along a new highway that's set to be expanded even further. Fabien shows us architectural atrocities from the past. Housing projects for resettled favela dwellers. Outmoded urban renewal projects. Public housing projects were built standing isolated next to the favelas, which is not ideal in terms of urban planning. Sao Francisco's new apartment blocks aren't yet very well integrated into their surroundings either. There are plans to give the favela a center far from the highway and a park. But the area is a former refuse dump. Soil contaminated with toxic chemicals has to be removed and shanties on the steep slope torn down because they're endangered by landslides. And housing is needed to replace them. Until recently, people here lived in structures they'd cobble together themselves. Now, in the space of a few weeks, thousands of them have to find new homes. Time is running short for Fabienne and German architect Klaus Bantel, who's been working in Brazil for 15 years now. Everything has to go quickly. The architects have very little time to design, and I wish Seheb could take more time for the design aspect of the projects. We ourselves don't have the time. We're completely overstretched. Everything's urgent. Landslides, floods, and all sorts of things increase the urgency of our work. Modular construction provides the fastest way to build the largest possible number of dwellings. Zoning laws further limit design options. Apartments can't be bigger than 50 square meters, otherwise they no longer qualify as public housing. In this case, all the apartments are 43 square meters, the bare minimum. It's scarcely possible to build an apartment with a living room and two bedrooms that's smaller than 43 square meters. Open-air walkways provide escape from the confined space. They're a way for Klaus Bantel to extend the small apartments to the outside. And he uses clear lines and bright colors. The residents like it. They show us their homes happily and proudly. The project is being funded by the city and the residents themselves. For 20 years, they'll pay 80 reals, about 30 euros a month, and then their homes will belong to them. Loreni Muller moved here recently. She even cooked for us. This was my dream. I think it's almost as wonderful as having a new baby. It's all I expected it to be. It's not furnished yet the way I want it, but I dearly love this apartment. The architect wants to know how well she's managing in her new home. 
hora que eu coloquei a chave, eu chorei. Chorei muito. I love it the way it is, though I wish the kitchen window were somewhere else. Otherwise, it's great. Eu não via a hora, eu sonhava. When I first went in, I wept. I've waited so long for a home and a better life for my son and me. But that also means a two-hour commute to work. And there's still a lack of usable public space. Her son Luis has few options after school. We go to Cantinho do Seu. The favela in the south lies in the edge of Sao Paulo's drinking water reservoir. Here, architect Marco Boldarini has turned the reservoir's banks into a park. Before that, the favela sprawled right up to the water. In close consultation with the residents, the banks were cleared. About 10% had to move. 76-year-old Lourdes da Silva was able to stay, so were the trees she'd planted herself. I've worked on public social welfare projects ever since I was at school. The subject interests me. It brings me closer to the people in the favelas. It's a subject that provides society with answers to urgent questions. There used to be nothing here. We were isolated at the end of the world. Nobody knew this part of the city. Now the district has really been improved. One and a half of the seven kilometers of the lakeside path have been completed. But the picture is deceptive. Environmental awareness is still inadequate. Wastewater still flows untreated into the lake. I think we're on the right track, not least because with a project like this, we can show how valuable public space can be and say, hey, public space can be beautiful. It can be cool. As you can see from the people who walk along here on a Sunday as if they were presenting themselves on a catwalk. And I think that's extremely important. And it raises environmental awareness saying, hey, public space, water. Water has always had slightly negative associations here in Sao Paulo. Back in Europe, I lived near the water and it's great. Here, water is always connected with open sewage, and I think a project like this is incredibly valuable in bringing about this change in awareness. Planning for the megacity and the people on its margins is no easy job. Sometimes it involves only small steps, like a car-free Sunday on the street. But all in all, Fabian Hölzel loves her work in Sao Paulo. I don't believe urban planning and architecture can change society and people, but I do believe we can make daily life a little more pleasant, colorful and tolerable. No more and no less, but exactly that.